way we've got so many people in this world today that are accepting that there might be another way. But there's not another way that fell out in Houston at the biggest church in the United States. Larry King asked him, said, what do you think there's another way? He said, Larry, I've been thinking about it. I said, you false prophet. If you're even thinking about it, there's another way you false. Because you're not convinced and you're not saved if you're not convinced that he is salvation. How can you be saved if you're not convinced of what the Bible says about him? And what he said about himself. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man shall come to the Father except by me. I'm the door to the sheepfold. You try to end up any other way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. So if there's any, any thought of doubt that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he's the only way, then you're not saved because you've got to totally con you got to totally be convinced that he's the only way before he can give you his plan of salvation. So you've got a lot of people in this country now that's been swayed away by this old religious belief that we all got the same God. You can just choose your way to get to him. But that's not Bible. That's not the word of God. We don't choose our way to get to him. That way he's been chosen for us. We just got to believe in what, what, what God did. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only big out son. Who's ever believed in him. Not nobody else. Him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. And it goes on the next verse. It said. He come not into the world. To condemn the world. But that the world through him. Not Buddha. Not Mohammed. But the world through him. Might be saved. And through nobody else. Jesus is the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come to the Father except by me. I'm the door to that sheepfold. So there's no other way but Jesus. And the world and the, and, and the government, and it's coming on down. The government's taking over everything else. They're going to try to take over the church. And we'll take over the they will take over the religious church. There won't be no problem because they'll be in and bow. But the real church of Jesus Christ is going to stand up. The real body of Christ is going to say no. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like we will not bow. We know that God is able to deliver us. But we're still not going to bow to you. So the real church of Jesus Christ is going to the fire. And the fire is going to Put that final touch of purification on there. John said, I saw 144,000 of, of the Jews. And then I saw a number that no man can number that came out through the great tribulation, washed their robes, pardoned the blood of the Lamb. And they didn't take the mark of the beast. They didn't starve to death. They lived through it. And the Bible said they overcame him by the blood of a lamb. He's talking about the beast the, and the Christ. They overcame him by the blood of a lamb. And the word of their testimony. And they loved out their lives unto the death. So there's going to be a number that no man can number. They ain't going to take the mark of the beast. And, and to have the world's system at your side very much longer. You've got to take the mark of the beast to get what the world offers. We're going to have to have enough faith to stand. And I read the end of the book. The church won. The church won. I read the, where the church won the battle. We're going to win. The real church of Jesus Christ is going to win. She's going to overcome the Antichrist. She's not going to take his mark. And she ain't going to starve to death during those years. God's going to keep her. God's going to protect the church. The true church. The church of the living God. Now this religious church is going to receive it. 
They're going to go along with it. Because they're going to say it's just, just good for you. Good, this is good. But it's going to be deception. And they're going to be deceived. And when they do wake up, it'll be too late. But the real church of Jesus Christ is going through the hard times. I said she's going through victorious. Over the devil. Victorious over the Antichrist. She's going to win this battle. I read where the church won. She's going to win. She's going to overcome. But we're going to have to have what God said we could have. You know, if he had not knew that the church needed to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, then he would have never told them that said, I'll go away, but if I don't go away, said the comforter won't come. But said, if I go away, I pray the Father, he'll send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and said, he'll abide with you forever. Yeah. Said, when he's come, he'll take a mind and reveal it to you. But said, if I don't go, it cannot come. He knew that, that you know, he said that his name should be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. But there had to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost before we could have God in us. So God, he's not just with us now, he's in us. Amen. Jesus said, I'm with you, but I'm going to be in you. Amen. Speaking of the Holy Ghost, he said, in that day, I'll walk in you. And I'll talk in you. I'll be your God and you'll be my people. So he saw that the church needed to be filled. And that was the only way that we could be filled with him. And he could walk in us and talk in us. Before the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he was just with them. But after the Holy Ghost came, he was in them. And it's Christ in us. Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's the mystery of God. Jesus living in you. Living in your body. Living in your spirit. Living in your soul. Abiding in you. Walking in you. Talking in you. Leading you. Guiding you. You're overcoming through the power of God. Overcoming. He said, greater is he that's in you. That's what he's talking about. Is the Holy Ghost. The greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Is a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And fire. That's the greater in you. So it was needful. It was needful. For the Holy Ghost to come. It was needful. For us to be filled and baptized. With the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Hallelujah. So he said. If I don't go away the comfort won't come. But if I go away. I send you another comfort. He'll abide with you forever. I'm with you. I'll be in you. You'll know me because I've been with you. You'll know it's me. You're going to, you're going to know it's me inside you because I've been with you. Christ in you. Jesus in you. The kingdom of God living inside you. Hallelujah. He said, don't say go here or go there, but said, behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the house of God. You're where God lives. This is the temple, not these four walls. Your heart, your spirit is where Jesus lives. It's where you're born again. When you're born again, you're born of his spirit, his seed. See, corn's got a seed, okra's got a seed, watermelon's got a seed, and God's got a seed. God's seed is the word. It brings forth in his likeness. You're planted. You're raised in his likeness. You come forth in his likeness. There's nothing inside of a grain of corn to make anything else but another stalk of corn. There's nothing in a watermelon seed to make anything else. Dude, you couldn't trust what you was planting. If you couldn't trust what you was planting, my God, anything might come up. Well, it looks like a watermelon seed. But I planted some look like this last year. 
and okra come. So I don't know. I'm just sowing some seed, hoping I'll, I'll raise something I can eat. And if it's that dangerous, you may be eating some poison. But God fixed it. He fixed it. There's nothing inside that wall of L and C to bring forth anything else but another wall of yeah. yeah. So he's got a seed. God's got a seed. And there's nothing in this Bible to make you like anything else but Jesus. Yeah. It'll bring forth Jesus. It'll bring forth Jesus. It'll bring forth a son of God. Hallelujah. What man of love has the Father bestowed upon you that you should be the sons of God heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ is done not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is every man that hath this hope in himself purifies himself even as he's pure we should be like him we should be like him. There's nothing in this Bible to make us like anything else but him. Amen. If we're in the truth, if we're in the word of God, if we're eating the flesh of Jesus and drinking his blood, there's nothing else in this Bible to make us in the image of nothing else. See, we, we are the recreation of God in Christ Jesus. Adam Lost it. But Jesus come to give it back. To recreate us. See man was made in his image. But he lost that image. He lost that image. His dominion. He lost it in the garden. When he ate the fruit. That God said don't eat. The tree of the knowledge. Of good and evil. The day you eat this tree. You'll surely die. They ate it. The devil fooled a woman to eat it. She turned and gave it to the man. And God drove him out of his presence. But Jesus came to bring us back. And he did. He was that tree of life also. He said it was in the garden. He didn't tell him not to eat that. He just told him not to eat it. Of the knowledge of good and evil. He could have ate all he wanted of the tree of life. But see, the devil stepped in and told him, No, said you'll get you really get something if you eat this tree. You'll you, you really get some knowledge and wisdom that God don't want you to have. You'll have wisdom like God. The very thing that the devil tells you to do, God always says not do. The very thing that God says not do is the thing that the devil tells you to do. So he deceived him. But Jesus come back to recreate us. He come to give us back that image. We could walk like him. In Romans 8. Whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate. That we could become in the image of his dear son. That he might be the firstborn. Among many brethren, I'm telling you the church, the sons of God, the body of Christ, we're going to be like him. That, that's the full assurance. That, that's the full adoption. That's the fullness. Yeah. That when we come in the image of Jesus Christ, yeah. that's what God has planned for the church is to grow to his image that we might know him in all of his fullness. Glory yeah. 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 Does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we appears, we'll be like him. He's doing something you can't see with your natural eyes. He's doing something in us that we can't see with our natural eyes. We will know what it is when we see him. We won't know what it is until we see him. But when we see him, we'll know what it is. For we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah! We'll see him. We'll know him. Thank God because we'll The church has been formed. The body of Christ has been formed in his image, in his likeness, in his glory, in his power. Yeah. 
We're being made by the word. And see that word. That word creates. That word forms. That word prunes. It's the pruning axe. It whittles. It fashions. It forms. That's why we got to have the word. To make us. To recreate us. He said put off the old man. Put on the new man. Which after God's created. In righteousness. And true holiness. Put him off. Put this old man off. Put on Jesus. Put on the new man. Put on the word. Put on the likeness of Jesus. Grow in his image. Grow in his likeness. Become like him. Follow out this plan. This blueprint. Jesus is the blueprint. You don't want to know what God's got. Yes we're supposed to be examples. We're supposed to be examples. But our example. And our blueprint. And what God wants out of us is Jesus. What God wants us out of us is Jesus. We should be like him. Whom he did foreknow, he did for destiny. That we would come in the image of his dear son. That he might be the first born among many brethren. That there'd be many more like Jesus. Many more to do his works. Many more in his likeness and in his glory. That's going to go forth in these last days. The sons of God. The whole earth, he said, moaning. And travaileth until now. For the manifestation. Right now, if you ever need it, sons of God, we need them. I mean, these forces, these devils out here. These demonic drug spirits. Just normal church ain't going to set them free. Just normal church ain't going to set them free. It's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost. It's going to take the power of the anointing. It's going to take the sons of God to rise in this last day and stand up in the earth and go forth like the apostles did. He told Joshua, he said, if you'll walk before me and keep my commandments, there'll never be able to be a man ever to stand before you. As I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Take my people on. Take them on. To come behind a man like Moses to see all the great things that Moses done and to have the understanding that Joshua was standing. It took a visitation from God to make him believe. It took a visitation from God. It's going to take a visitation of an outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon the church upon this generation to make us believe as I was with Moses he said see this is a spiritual kingdom and the only way it comes to its full is by the spirit this is a heavenly king. This is Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. He said, if my kingdom was of this world, my disciples would fight for me. But my kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom wasn't of this world. He said, The kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, joy, the kingdom of heaven is not eating and drinking. Oh, I know that's heaven to the flesh. But the kingdom of heaven don't consist of eating and drinking. It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's what God wants us to be filled with. Righteousness and joy and the Holy Ghost. That's what the church, that's when we can do the work of God. That's when we can stand up in the earth and make a difference and be a light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. We may have righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
I said, hallelujah. We shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. He's coming. And we're going to know him because we're going to be like him. That's the final fix. That's the final completion of the church is to be like Jesus. To walk as he walked. To talk as he talked. To heal like he healed. To preach like he preached. To believe like he believed. He's the blueprint. He's what God has set before us and said this is what I want. This is look at him. Look unto Jesus. The heart and the finisher. Look unto him. Look unto Jesus. He started and he's going to finish it. Look unto Jesus, the heart and the by faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross despising the shame, has sit down <laughs> expecting his end to made his footstool. And you say, man, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, also the weapon of our warfare is mighty through God. But I pull him down. How strong holds casting down every imagination you'll be able to keep your mind clean able to keep your spirit right hallelujah we have a weapon and the weapon of our warfare is mighty through God it's mighty it's mighty by the Holy Ghost it's mighty the weapon we have a weapon we have a weapon we have the Holy Ghost we have the Spirit of God we have the Word of God we have a weapon and it's mighty through God strongholds casting down every thing that exalts itself against God in your mind in your spirit you can feel them old spirits trying to exalt themselves against God trying to trying to get you to believe something above God trying to get you to believe something that is God and it really ain't God and that's why we've got power to pull it down we've got power to cast it down we've got power to put it on our foot and tread upon it and walk upon it he said behold i give unto you power to tread upon serpents hallelujah and all the power of the enemy not part of it to walk on and tread praise god tread on them walk on them over all the power of the enemy he said nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you or harm you in you than he that's in the world. We're going to be like him. Don't give up on him. Because you've gone through the storm. Don't give up on God's completion. Paul said in the book of Thessalonians, he said God is able to finish what he started. God is able to put a finish on this house. Oh yes, God's able to finish what he started. The word of God, don't give up. The word of God, don't stop. God, don't quit. God, don't faint. Uh, the, in the book of Isaiah, he said, he, he's God. He don't faint. Neither is he weary. He doesn't faint. Neither is he weary. He's going to finish what he started. He's going to have a church, Paul said, without spot, without blemish, and without wrinkle. It's time to give ourselves to God. It's time to tarry. It's time to long for Him. It's time to search for Him. It's time to fast and seek God and pray and call on the name of Jesus and get back to the altar and begin to tarry. Tarry for an outpouring. Tarry for endowment with I was just telling God today I've been praying Lord endue me we need to be endued again Lord we got to have something to face this dark world the world took over by rebellion and drugs it's took over by perversion it's took over by every demon how the pits of hell has been unleashed we're not just in any time we're in the last time we're in the last days and it's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost it's going to take the to be endued with power. He knew that the church could not do what she was called to do unless she was endued. That's why he said, go back. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But go back to the city of Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued. Hallelujah. 
If it worked then, it'll work now. I said if it worked then, it'll work now. Can we just believe it? The church is overdue for endowment of power. I said we're overdue. We're overdue. When the Holy Ghost drains out, authority drains out. And that policeman may not weigh 90 pound wet. But if he's got that badge, you better listen to him. And he's got a 38 or 9 millimeter or 45 or 44. He's got the authority to use it. And it goes all the way back. Badge takes him all the way back to the White House. Right on back to the state house, to the White House. Then back up that one little 90 pound police officer, wet. When he's dry, he lays wet. He, he weighs less. But he's got authority. He's got that badge. When you see that badge glitter, if you don't see the badge, you're up, you're questioning who, who are you? Who said I'm going to jail? I don't see no badge. Well, I forgot my badge. Well, I'm not going to jail till I can see a badge. I got to know you got authority. Let me, what I'm saying is a devil ain't going to pay you no attention. But if you got that authority and if you got the Holy Ghost, he knows that heaven is behind you. He knows that Jesus is behind you. He knows that the word of God, that all in heaven holds, is behind you. He's going to give a people back. He said, I'll restore the years. That the canker worm. And the caliper have eaten. I'll restore the years. I'll give you back what the devil has stolen. And let me tell you, we have been robbed in this generation. Let me lift your hand and say, we have been robbed. We have been stripped. Our vines is made bare. This is a generation that's been stripped. The vines has been made bare. The fruit's been robbed. And Joel said, come back to the house of God and start crying, moaning, crying out. Howling. He said, How? Come and lie all night between the porch and the altar and say, Spare thy people. Bring not to heritage to reproach. You don't find many folks who want to stay there all night no more. Used to, it was, they stayed at church much more than they did at home. They stayed in the floor more than they did in the bed. Some of y'all remember what I'm saying. Quiet down because you don't do it no more. But the church was on fire. Preachers was on fire. Handmaidens was on fire. Hallelujah. I said it was on fire. The church was on fire. He said, there's one way to get it back. Vines bare. He said, come back. Gather the children, gather the suckle, and gather them all into the house of the Lord. And let them cry. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. God will answer. There's one thing that is so sure to God will answer prayer. If God won't answer prayer, we all messed up. But he will. God answers prayer. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. You shall search for me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. 
God will be found of those that seek him that lay aside that push aside what they want to do get a jug of water and go back get the minds made up I'm coming after the Lord I ain't giving up I'm staying here until it breaks I'm staying here until heaven opens up we'll never see our completion without another outpouring of the Holy Ghost we'll never see our completion we got to get hungry, desperate. I like the story of the man. Determined. Determined. Man, folks was getting the Holy Ghost in the old days. Husband got up one Monday morning, told his wife, said, I ain't going to work today. I ain't doing nothing else till I get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> said, I'm going up on that hill. And said, you can come get me and bury me. If I don't get the Holy Ghost, you prepare to bury me. Because I'm not going to eat. I ain't coming back from that hill till I get the Holy Ghost. It's called now determination. I read where Bevington climbed up in the hollow log. Stayed there in that hollow log till God spoke to him. And revivals broke out. I read where another man forgot his name. They wrote him, told him that revivals had broke out. How God was moving. He took that letter and climbed up the brow patch and prayed until God baptized 17 families with the Holy Ghost. And then revival began to break out everywhere. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. See, we just got to believe that he is. Yes. The Bible said, he that comes to God must believe that he is. Yes. That man had some faith to climb on that hollow log and say, God, I'm going nowhere. I ain't going to try to run no revival. I ain't going to try to go nowhere until you speak to me. Yes. He said, a, a squirrel brought him two acorns three times a day. He ate those six, six acorns a day. Satan that hollow log. Said he'd come up with him and drop two acorns. About noon he'd drop him two more. Even time he dropped two more and he'd eat them six acorns. But he stayed there until God spoke to him and told him what to do. Hallelujah. And even after that the devil fought him. But he stuck it out. He went back on an oak tree in the rain. Stayed three days. And he saw a vision of that. What God told him at Hollow Lord to go to this town and, and open up a church and have revival. As you come out of that Hollow Log, he headed to, toward the town and said nothing wasn't working for him. But now, since God spoke to him, everybody was offering him something. Come, come run us a revival. Take this church. I'm a, I'm a, we'll give you good money. We'll pay you good money. He'll, said, he kept telling them, no, I can't do it. God spoke to him. He said, there ain't nothing over there. There ain't, there ain't been no revivals over there in, a, in, a, in years. He said, you can't do nothing. Come on, past our church. Come all along the way. I know you not, not have no break. But when God speaks to you and sends you somewhere, you'll have so much come up just to detour you, just to pull you aside. Hallelujah! To try to hinder what God has called you and told you to do. It won't be God. I don't care how good it looks. If God told you to do something else. I'll say that again. I said it won't be God no matter how good it looks. If God has told you to do something else. Fact of being is what God tells you to do. He don't shine it up. He don't polish it up. He just throws it out there in the mess it's in. And says, I want you to go and pray it through. I want you to go and fix it. I want you to go and preach hell out of this place. 